When you play the Game of Thrones, you subscribe and like. Or you die. There is no middle ground. All right, hello YouTube. Welcome back to the Grease Comedy YouTube channel. Today's video, we are going to be talking about the entire really Dornish plot and Feast for Crows. And really the main point I want to look at is if the Dornish had actually crowned Marcella, say Duran instead of doing the whole Targaryen plot, goes, you know what, we can crown Marcella, maybe he listens to the Sand Snakes and Ariane, and we do this. Now, it would have to kind of break a lot of Duran's character. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe they surplant Duran. I don't know how Ariane would feel about that and all this, but Duran is kind of standing in the way. Then we know the people of Dorne want sort some sort of conflict. That's really all about what the first couple chapters with Arya Hoda are about. How the people want to go to war. And so let's give it this situation that Tyene kind of suggests. It's kind of the last one that of the Sand Snakes is given to Duran in the first Arahota chapter. So what if, in this situation, Marcella is crowned? How would that have worked out for Dorne? Would that have gone well? And all of that. Now, before we get into the video, let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Uh, as you guys can kind of tell, especially this video, and there's going to be another video this week that are heavily inspired by Feast for Crows. Uh, let me know, what do you guys think about me doing, like, not a reread, um, like, style with my series, where it's, like, in-depth of every single chapter every week, but, like, doing more or less a summary of A Feast for Crows in four parts. So go through every chapter, give, like, a brief summary, uh, and kind of divide it into quarters, right? So the first one would be, like, the first 200-ish pages, and so forth and so forth. Let me know what you guys would like that. I don't know if I want to do that or not. I'm currently rereading uh, A Feast for Crows just on my own time, and I thought, you know, if I'm going to be doing that... Maybe I could do, like, a summary type thing uh, for you guys. I don't know if you guys would like that. Again, it wouldn't be nowhere near as detailed as my rereads, um, like, my series for Game of Thrones so far. But it would be something that would be nice. Probably, like, maybe a 45-hour minute hour video for each quarter. It'd probably take four videos to get through all of the Feast for Crows. But let me know what you guys, if you guys would like that for me to do that while I'm rereading the book. But... Let's get into it. Also, subscribe and like if you would like to learn more about A Song of Ice and Fire, or you just enjoy uh, talking about this content and maybe hearing some different ideas. So, this is the main thing, I think, with the whole crowning Marcella plot that gets a little fuzzy. Because when we see Ariane trying to do it with Marcella, it's a lot of manipulation of Marcella. It's a lot of, like, you know, we're kind of lying to her type stuff. How long can they manipulate Marcella into being okay with being the queen? And there's two different routes you could go. Now, one of the routes would be, okay, we crown Marcella as just the queen of Dorne. Now, there's a lot of problems with that in general because Marcella has almost no claim uh, to Dorne. Now, you could, again, marry Tristane to Marcella and say, okay, you know, this is our new rulers. Maybe it's still a little fidgety, and would Ariane want to give up that power? I don't think so. So, again, the more likely option is they crown Marcella and say that she is the rightful queen of Westeros, which is what they were planning to do in the books originally, or Ariane's faction was anyway. And, okay, so this ends up happening. What is going to happen? Now, Tyene suggests that, hey, if we crown Marcella and we play of a defensive war, we'll be fine, Right. No one can really invade us. Not even the dragons could do it. Um, Daron, you know, the, the first Daron he had tried, he did conquer them to a degree, but it, he didn't hold. And so that's the whole point here is that, okay, given the situation, the landscape of what's going on, we can actually crown Marcella and get away with it. Now, I don't know how that'd work because you'd have to keep Marcella in a situation where she is wanting to be queen but how does that work? Because now she's going in an open war against her brother. I don't just don't see how that holds up. Like how Marcella says, yeah, I'm cool with it. Unless there's some sort of manipulation where Marcella and Tristane do marry. And let's say the Dornish fake something or they tell Marcella a bunch of lies that because the two were married, um, the crown decided to and try and invade them. There'd have to be some reason as to why Marcella would just go along with this. And again, I don't think it's impossible. Again, she's, you know, still a child, so they could manipulate her and do all sorts of things. But let's just say that that works out. 
So what does the crown do at this point, right? Again, the news has not reached Duran and Ariane that Tywin is even dead yet, right? Because this is all kind of happening at the same time. So they don't really know that actually they actually do have a pretty good advantage at this point because Tywin is gone. Like they were thinking about doing this with Tywin alive. That was a lot of their motivation that they wanted to get vengeance for Elia and Oberyn. And so, okay, now let's give them the actual full spear of what's going on. So at this point, Tywin has now died. Tommen is on the throne. Tommen, who is a boy king, he doesn't have the best advisors around him. Cersei's still in a very prominent role of power. There's a lot of infighting between the Lannisters and the Tyrells. And even when you look at, say, for instance, young Griff, when he comes over, it's we're in a state of chaos. And all these things haven't happened yet, but young Griff will come into fruition, right? He is someone that's going to come over, and he's, he is going to invade. That is not going to change. And on the other hand, you also are going to have Euron, right? That's not going to change either. So I actually think the Dornish would be okay, especially given the situation that they want to do a defensive war, where given Tyene's plan, if that's what the actual plan is, and I'm going to say it probably is because Tyene and Ariane kind of seem like the two people uh, kind of figureheading this plan. Well, okay. I think they'd be completely fine. But the question is, you can't really just crown Marcella, say she's the rightful ruler, but then have her not sit on the Iron Throne. It's the same problem of someone like Stannis, for instance, right? Where it's like, you may have the rightful claim, but you don't have legitimacy. You're not on the throne. Who are you to say you are the king or the queen? It's the same idea when we look at, say, like House of the Dragon or uh, the Dance of the Dragons, where it's like Aegon II had the throne. That was the seat of, of power. And so, given this situation, you actually kind of take away any possible allies you could have, right? Young Griff is not someone that's going to ally with you when he wants to be king, but you also have Marcella being queen, so you run into issues there. And the Dornish, in my opinion, completely destroy any of any allies they could possibly have. Quentin could have been an, a very uh, big deal if he, if he was able to use as a bargaining chip for someone else. But again... That's a big problem. So then the other idea is like, okay, if you're going to try to get more power, who could Ariane marry? Like, she is the one that is going to come to power in Dorne. Who can she marry that actually makes sense? And that's a hard question to answer because in the normal story, we think that Ariane and Young Griff are going to get together. But again, Ariane is kind of the person that is figureheading and supporting Marcella for the throne. And so she can't marry Young Griff who wants the throne. There's not really a Baratheon to marry at this point. The Tyrells are backing Tommen. There doesn't really seem like a good option for Aryan to really marry at this point, especially given the neighbors that they have, because the Dornish, Dornish have really they've isolated themselves. Now, a really interesting idea would be, what if someone like Aryan married Euron? Now, that could be possible. But again, the issue is going to be Euron is going to be want to be king. So again, you run into another issue. So the biggest issue in this scenario is that the Dornish just really lack the ability to make alliances. It's something Rob faces as well, because when he, the War of the Five Kings starts out, he's named king. And so that isolates him from allying with Stannis, with allying with Renly. Even when he allies with Renly, it basically kind of strips Rob of his crown, more or less. It's like, yeah, you can call yourself the King of the North, but you're not. Like, you're, you're still loyal to the crown type of deal. And so it's just going to be the same thing from the Marcella camp, is that all of their potential allies really aren't there like maybe you could look at arian marrying one of these tire these reach houses that maybe would want a, a flip maybe like the tarleys maybe like dick on tarley with arian or something like that but i don't know if randall would go with the dornish i just don't see it and so we sit here and we're thinking okay well what can the dornish really do like Yes, a defensive war, I think they're fine, but they have to do more than that. You can't just sit back the entire time. It's kind of the same thing as Stannis, right? I think Stannis and Marcella in this scenario are very similar because the longer Stannis like sits it out and isn't going for the throne, the more irrelevant he gets. The more it, he just becomes less and less legitimate in a lot of people's eyes and his power level uh, kind of fades. So I think the Dornish are going to be forced to do something. And so, how does this work? So, given that all of their forces, you know, 
get all you know basically together we see that maybe they wait for a little while just to see how things start to you know sway we see the issues with again the lannisters and also the tyrells now the biggest i think change here would be instead of jamie taking the lannister army up north to kind of finish up the riverland stuff i think there's actually a situation in which jamie and the lannisters go to Dorne, maybe not like invading it, but preparing for war, like protecting the reach and going with the Tyrell forces. And so I think you could have actually a major diversion of a lot of resources towards that Southern border, towards a lot of the marcher Lords and all of that. And that could be where we see a lot of our fighting, but what does that do? Right. That opens up a lot of things for someone like young Griff in this situation and Euron, because then when you start seeing Euron attack the reach, where do the Tyrell's forces go from there? Right. Where did the fleets go? Where do, and this, this is the, there's just so many what ifs in my situation with this, because I just don't see a situation in which the Dornish come out on top. Like, and this is one thing that I think you look at with Rob in his campaign is that in the end, the Riverlands was really the detriment of, of Rob because he got named king of not only the north, but also the Trident and, and the Riverlands. So he can't just pull back to the north and let the Riverlands basically just get raided and sieged everywhere and basically captured. He can't do that. Now with Dorne, it's much different, right? theoretically Marcella could just sit there and then and the Dornish I think the best way of going about this is just to say we are independent now we're going back to before um with when they got brought in with Daron uh, so I, I think for me that's the way you go I, in the long term I don't think the Dornish can take the throne without any allies even with all the chaos going on in Westeros I think the best course of action for them is to just say they're independent from the throne like who who's going to be able to take them out i i don't see this situation where the tyrells and lannister forces invade the dornish and even if they do that's a huge detriment to the reach euron could easily take the reach given in that situation if all their forces are in dorn i just don't see i don't think it happens right i think jamie is too smart i think randall tarley is too smart i think these people would be like we're, we're not invading the we're not invading the dornish it's just stupid and so I think what ends up coming of this is I think Marcella eventually snaps. I think as she grows older and say the years go by, I think she would just snap out of this saying, wait, I, I'm being used this entire time. Like I'm being used against my brother. I actually think in this scenario, there's a good chance Marcella just is killed off because she's not willing to go along with this anymore and all of that. And so I think really what ends up resulting of this is that the Dornish just become independent. And I think that's something the Dornish could even do now, like even without declaring Marcella as the, the queen, I think they could just declare themselves independent and they'd be fine. There would be a lot of bloodshed once the, you know, all of Westeros unified because I guarantee there'd be another conquest of Dorne. But I think they could literally just go independent. It, it's kind of similar with the, the North in a video I'm going to think I'm going to do next week is that why didn't the North after the dragons were gone? just break away now i haven't i have a couple answers that i'll talk about in that video but theoretically the north and dorn are in the same situation is it's like it's so difficult to try and actually attack them that it's almost not worth it and like the only thing that made it to where they actually bent the knee is the dragons because the dragons you can fast pass through make mo kalen you can light mo kalen up you can get through to the north actually much easier the way the dragons are able to travel so quickly you can take things much quicker and so when you look at it and the dragons are gone at this point like you know and i think when danny comes over that's even more fascinating it's like does danny even try to get dorn back into the fold that's there's so many interesting questions that i have with this because dorn is in such a unique situation that i don't really think they just straight up lose like i don't i don't think that ever like occurs but thank you guys all for watching let me let me know what you guys think about this idea because i just think there's so many like ways you can go i didn't even mention like cersei how cersei would take this right and how she would try to save her daughter and again that would probably prompt jamie to lead forces to dorn i, I just don't know i don't know what, what do you guys think about this whole idea i i think I think it's actually better than probably what Duran is planning because I think it's going to get a lot more of his family members killed, a lot more of the armies of the Dorn killed. 
And again, I just don't think an offensive ward is good for Dorn. They do not have the forces to do so. But thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye, guys.